this is a, okay, thank you. Um, this is a continuation of the last slide from the professor because it regards the search of extraterrestrial life. Uh, in my presentation, I would like to raise maybe some questions or points that could be helpful for the discussion. Next, please. Next slide. Ah, okay. I, I'm quoting here the prologue for this uh, plenary session. And uh, as it says, scientists are uh, more aware that scientific knowledge uh, will have to become integrated into a more holistic understanding. And I think that uh, uh, astrobiology is a good example for this. There is a complexity and analogy, analogy in biology. And basically, this is related to the definition of life. If we are going to search for life in the universe, we need to know what we are going to find and if it fits the definition of, of life. It's also present in the history of life, especially on Earth. Uh, we need to understand uh, the history of life on Earth to understand life in the universe. And related to this is also the definition of intelligence. If we are searching or hoping for intelligent life in the universe, uh, what is intelligence? What means to be intelligent or a spiritual being? In this sense, I think the working group that is starting on Thursday on neurosciences and the human person may have re uh, relevant results to astrobiology. Uh, regarding astrophysics, as we have already seen, um, it has complexity in itself, but uh, an analogy. Um, with the discovery of extrasolar planets, uh, we have learned that not all solar systems are similar to, to uh, all stellar systems are similar to our solar systems. In the formulation of new uh, theories to explain the formation of planets, uh, we need to consider our solar system, exoplanets that have been detected, uh, giant stars, and their environments. Um, the models predict the formation of terrestrial planets uh, in most, almost all stars. Uh, Instead, the formation of uh, giant planets like uh, Jupiter uh, is still uncertain. Um, we have detected giant exoplanets uh, in orbits that are very close to the star, which is uh, different from our solar system. So we need to propose some kind of planetary migration to explain uh, the position of these planets in, the, in this stellar system. This not, ah, oh, okay. Recently, the, it was, uh, there was a, I'm sure you, you are aware of this, the, the news that the nearest, nearest exoplanet was discovered near Alpha Centaurus B, and uh, it's a terrestrial planet. You, you can see there, I cannot point it out from here, I guess, but uh, it's very close to the star. As a comparison, you can see the orbit of Mercury and then the orbit of Venus compared to our solar system. And in blue, there is a, the habitable zone for the Centaurus B system. Uh, we know that there are about 330 stars with 800 planets. Uh, this is from the Kepler mission, different sizes uh, for the planets. Uh, compare, you see, to Jupiter, uh, to Neptune, and to the, the Earth. I think the, the last planet in Alpha Centaurus B is the mo smallest uh, terrestrial planet discovered until now. So uh, why is... Uh, extraterrestrial intelligent life so fascinating for the general public. Um, I would, would say that um, the, the question, are we alone 
or is this the only time and place in the cosmos where biology has led, led to intelligence? Intelligence is a very human question. There are other topics that I'm not going to discuss this, but there are good uh, stories for uh, science fiction movies. In, in any case, they are uh, topics that are relevant to philosophy and theology and uh, religion in general. In 2000, In 2009, uh, we had uh, this w study week of astrobiology uh, here at the Pontifical Academy, and Cardinal Laiolo gave um, a very good address to greet the participants. I'm going to quote him because he's uh, the view of someone who is not a scientist, and uh, basically he said, it is a field which requires a range of all but the most profound of scientific knowledge as well as highly refined re research techniques, because it means often proceeding on the basis of scarce evidence and formulating hypo hypotheses requiring a strict verification, which in turn can be diversely configured. It means resorting to results of research based on extreme aspects of possibility of life on Earth, and to study how to verify its presence on other planets or exoplanets. It means, at its limit, studying if and how one could verify the existence of extraterrestrial forms of intelligence and how to enter in contact with them. This is a task that demands scientific integrity, an intense and indispensable case of a vast multidisciplinary research. This is a, an excellent case for the Pontifical Academy because it's a multidisciplinary body. In research, the scientists must also be allowed the possibility to walk paths which uh, do not always lead to positive results. We learn also from our failures. And one question I would like to raise is, uh, are we able to predict the discovery of life in the universe as we did, for example, with the discovery of Newton, that from the perturbation in the orbits of uh, Uranus, uh, later uh, Neptune was discovered. Of course, as you can imagine, there are um, many philosophical, social, and theological implications. I want to say a word about theological implications, though I'm not a theologian. Um, but uh, to show you that this is nothing really new, I, I'm quoting Father Secchi, a Jesuit astronomer, uh, who is one of the fathers of the modern astrophysics. Uh, this is uh, what the, he had to say about intelligent life. Those immense regions must be inhabited by intelligent beings and though with reason, capable to know, love, and honor the creator. And perhaps these inhabitants of the stars are more faithful than us to the duties of acknowledgement towards who draw them from nothing. So, uh, more than a century ago, um, Father Seki was considering all of this. Um, so, here there are some challenges uh, to theology. Uh, the following core principles in Christianity might be challenged with the potential discovery of uh, extra intelligent extraterrestrial life. Uh, uniqueness and centrality of humankind, uniqueness of the incarnation and Christocentrism, original sin, Christian redemp redemption. How could we answer or rethink these doctrines? Good question, let's see. I think I'm not going to discuss this uh, right now, but uh, I think it would be possible from within the Catholic theological tradition to respond to the, those challenges. Uh, in case uh, we find extraterrestrial intelligent life. And I would, I would like to end quoting Tancel Aniti uh, from his uh, very good dictionary on science and religion. The last word on the question of the extraterrestrial life must not come from theology, but from science. The existence of intelligent life on planets other than Earth is neither required nor ex excluded 
by any theological argument. For theology, as for all humanity, all we can do is to wait patiently. Thank you for your patience.